How should we react <clears throat> when God does good things for us? We're so used to so much negativity and we turn to God to remove the negativity from our lives, which is of course important and crucial. But so many people, that's their whole view of God. You know, I think about an episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza is sitting, laying down uh, on, the, on the couch with a therapist. And he tells the therapist, God won't let me be successful. And the therapist said, George, I thought you told me you don't believe in God. He said, well, I do for the bad things. Or there's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer stopped to pray and he said, just don't get in my way. And of course, that's not the way that we should approach the Almighty. We have to recognize the good things that God does. Celebrate them, enjoy them, love them, be happy for them, and be grateful for them. So I'm talking about this now because I just experienced God's kindness and love, and I believe undeserved grace. I don't think I did anything to deserve this kindness, but I want to openly and publicly thank the Almighty for something good that happened. You know, I, uh, I had a speeding ticket, and I know I wasn't speeding that night. It was a few weeks ago, a few months ago now. And I came in for the, for the uh, hearing, and they offered a plea bargain. I said, I know I wasn't speeding. So they offered me a trial date, and this day only nine people showed up for a trial out of, you know, 30, 40 people for, uh, for, for, for tickets. Uh, most people just take the plea bargain. So I, I knew I wasn't speeding, you know. In the past, I pled guilty when I knew I was speeding, even though they say you're not supposed to do that. We're always supposed to fight it somehow is I even spent a night in jail over a speeding ticket down in Virginia. If you're over 80 miles an hour, it's a misdemeanor and they could lock you up. I was going more than 80. It wasn't intentional though, so I probably should have pled no contest instead of guilty, but I didn't understand how the plea bargain system worked. <clears throat> but that's neither here nor there, which I think that's also a kindness because I work in prison ministry. And so I had a little taste and that's part of, you know, there's the story of the, the, um, of the Chernobyler who, um, he's, he wound up in jail. And they say that uh, the matriarch, Rachel, Rachel and Menu, came and told him, it's interesting, they both have the same yard site. And they came to, um, uh, to, uh, what did, you know, have, she, she came to explain to him, to, to the Maranayim, to the Chernobyler, that it was because he did so much work helping get people out of prison who were un, unfairly and unjustly arrested um, that he, uh, you know, it's usually his debtor's prison and they didn't have the money and he would, he would get the money, you know, find, collect money to get them, to bail them out, things like that. Uh, but in any event, um, that he should know what a joy it is to get out of jail, that he knows, you know, that's a, a, a gift from God, that he experienced that, that experience. But, you know, we, we often, again, when something that is difficult like that happens to us, and we, we do all the soul searching and try to figure out what good this is, and, and justify and defend God for his goodness. But how often do we just thank him when it is obviously and openly good? You know, so what happened to me? All right, I had the speeding ticket. I pled not guilty. They arranged the trial date. I came for the trial, took the day off work for the trial, and uh, the officer didn't show up. It was a state trooper, and the ticket was dismissed for me and the other eight people who had trials that day. It wasn't just that, there were several officers, none of them showed up. And so that's, uh, that's just, that's how it worked. 
So uh, it's a very good, positive feeling. Now you could say, well, why, why did he, I even, I, and I know I wasn't speeding. Why did I even get pulled over if I wasn't speeding? Why did I have to take these two days off of work? I saw God's kindness in that as well. The first day I took off, while I was on my way to do the, to, to do the, um, to go to the trial, I got a request for that very day, about 10 miles away from the, from the court appearance, someone wanted me to perform a wedding. Now I, I'll admit that same day I was also upset because I, I wanted to that day go uh, to my other job and I didn't have the keys and now Baruch Hashem today I do have the keys so I'm going to the other job. But everything is in God's control and instead I was upset and I was upset at my daughter that why I didn't have the keys was a whole thing uh, and I shouldn't have been upset I should have looked at the positive aspects and uh, but here I can see only the positivity amidst other things going on one of the reasons I, I'm going into my other job today on one hand I had a vacation this weekend and I didn't go to work on Sunday but, the, uh, but uh, so I, I was planning anyway to come in this day since I took the day off of my other job it's a kindness of God that I even have days off from another job but also tragedies a tragedy that happened at my other job that I need to go minister about and, and someone who is there, they need to minister to Hamish uh, Sidishid, who needs chizik, and then also an old friend of mine, actually a friend of my Zayda, who is nifter and will go Mezer Hashem, if, you know, everything goes as planned to, to make a shiva call. But back to this question of the theology of gratitude and joy and happiness when things go right. Meaning, all right, it, it, it already was. I took the day off. I had the speeding ticket. I had the trial, and good things came out of that as well. But the, the etzim, bare fact that the ticket was dismissed, and I don't have to pay not the plea bargain ticket. Nothing was was dismissed. That's a great source of joy. And so, of course, the first thing was to thank God. And I, and I thanked and blessed the judge and I called my Rav, I told him the bracha you gave me, it helped a lot of people, they like to talk about theology and, and you know what you know the question of God's providence God's sovereignty do our prayers change things, do they not change things the way the Sama Rav explains meaning it's, it's not his own Kiddush, something already discussed in the Rishonim, is that the decree within God's sovereignty is that the pious person has to pay, pray for this thing to happen. Meaning, and, and, and just like you have to go to work to get paid for the work you do, and, and that's just part of the natural order of the world, so prayer and piety and things are also part of that natural order uh, and, it, and it doesn't actually affect God or even or, or, or providence or predestination or anything but rather it's all part of it and so all right so this morning I went to the mikveh before going to shul and I went to shul and went to the dominion which I don't often get to do especially in the morning because I work and I guess I could in the summer get up and go to an earlier minion but then well, how will that affect my work day and it's better for me just to, to, to pray alone um, in, in the winter I don't even really have that option uh, generally speaking uh, because where I live and where I work and so forth in the summer I do but our actual, you know, time of prayer is, is the time that I should already be at work. Uh, and I work about it, I have an hour commute to work, and so forth. So there's a lot of things to discuss, but in any event, the point is, is that whatever 
the aspect of that theology is of the efficacy of prayer or or God's providence or God's sovereignty all of these various theological intellectual issues we nonetheless must grab on to the emotional part that the joy that we feel when something goes right and that something that we prayed for came true whatever the theology is behind it is that we have to take that energy and express our gratitude and love for the Creator that He, in His providence, He gave He gave us this blessing. And from a biblical standpoint, Yaakov Avinu, the, prophet, the patriarch Jacob, says, "Katonti mikola chasada mikola emes." He said, I have become small because of all the kindness and truth that God has done with me. Meaning to say that this experience should humble us. And that's why we should view every kindness that God bestows upon us as something that he bestowed out of his grace and not because we deserved it. Whether that's part of God's as we say, Cheshben, his calculation of why he gave something to us. Maybe a person could deserve it or not. Nonetheless, we should always attribute it as being something we did not deserve and that it's part of God's compassion and mercy and grace that he bestowed upon us this free gift of the kindness that we did not deserve and be thankful to God recognize, be humbled, recognize our sins, and that nonetheless God is kind to us, and in that way we fulfill our obligation of gratitude, although we can never fully fulfill that, but nonetheless there's not an expectation for us to ever fully fulfill it. As Rabbi Tarfin said in Pirkei Avot, in the Talmud, the, the Ethics of the Fathers, that it, it's not your job to finish the work, but you're also not free to quit the work. You've got you to gotta find that balance. So, we've got to do the work, and we've and we got to keep going. And the, But that major part of that work is what we're all about. Why is our religion Judaism, Yahadut? What is the meaning of the name Judah, Yehuda? So Sapam Odes Hashem, right? Our matriarch Leah, she said, This time I will thank and praise the Lord, Al Kain Karashma Yehuda. And that's why she named her son Judah. That that, and so when we are called Jews, Yehudim, and our religion is Judaism, Yahadut, Yahadus, that term Judaism is something that comes from actually the apocryphal books, Second Maccabees, where there's the comparison between Judaism and Hellenism, but that concept came into the Jewish world, that's the earliest source we have for such a term, that it's an ism. But nonetheless, this is what we are all about. We are the people of thanksgiving. We are the people of gratitude to the Almighty. That's what the purpose of the Jewish people is, is to be that light unto the nations, the, the, the kingdom of priests, the holy nation, and the main issue that we should be focusing on is our gratitude to God, <coughs> particularly, I would say even more so, <coughs> in times when things are so difficult and so many tragedies have befallen the Jewish people and the other nations of the world. And the 
with wars and rumors of wars and so forth, even though that's from a different tradition, that, that quote, we nonetheless have to focus on gratitude, develop an attitude of gratitude, and in this way, instead of focusing on the negative, we will be very happy people. I remember I was by Rabbi Victor Miller, and I asked him, it was, it's on the tape, you can find online, the, the diamonds in the road. And Rabbi Miller is a chusy delenum. Well, call Yisrael. He said, which I later saw in the Chavos uh, Lavavos, that we have to look at the positive things in the world. There's so many good things in the world. There were two pious men, most likely with the Chavos Lavavos, when Ibn Pakuda speaks of Hasidim, of pious men. <coughs> Incidentally, he's usually talking about Sufi Muslims. But that's neither here nor there, although it's an important point. And it might be a Sufi story that's, that's you know, not of Jewish origin. They're walking along, excuse me, and they saw uh, a nevela, a carcass of a donkey. Or, or, or some other animal. So one said, look how disgusting this carcass is. And the other said, but look how white and clean his teeth are. If you accentuate the positive and you forget about the negative, you'll be a happier person. But all of those good Thanksgiving has to be rendered to the Creator. Of course, we thank everybody that the Creator used as fluchim, as emissaries of His goodness and kindness, and we express our gratitude to the human beings as well, whoever else helped us. But nonetheless, all, <laughs> all blessings, praise, and thanksgiving should be rendered unto the Almighty Creator, God, the Lord of Heaven and Earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. We'll see you later.